what's up guys listen um, quick video I wanted to do uh, I'm gonna title this one don't be afraid of the Glock why because I know a lot of guys that um, own Glocks and uh, I'm a Glock guy myself okay I'm a gun guy but I like Glocks but what happens is they shoot their Glocks they do their basic field strip and cleaning and they don't get to know their Glocks, really, their, their internals and how they function. Um, most importantly, they don't clean the most vital parts of the Glocks and uh, or their Glocks, and that's right here inside the slot. Um, and you know what? I'm guilty of that also. Like I said, I'm not a gunsmith. Um, but recently, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to take a dive and see if I can uh, do this myself. And I can, and it's easy. And if I can do it, trust me, you can do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with my Glock 19. Um, I'm going to show you exactly what a clean internal system should look like. And then I'm going to break down this little puppy. This is my 26 that I've owned for about 11 years, and I've never taken apart the slide. And I want to see what that looks like because I've never done it. But you know what? Never had a failure to feed, never had a stove, stove pipe. It always went bang. Um, not to say that you shouldn't do this, but you should. And it's just being lazy. So um, let's see what happens, okay? First of all, not nothing in the chamber, but uh, there is nothing in there. Okay, um, before I get into this, I just want to show you also, um, don't be afraid of doing your own gunsmithing on a Glock, because it's, it's really easy to do. Just uh, some example as to what, what I was able to do um, to the white lettering here, and that was just a little bit of white out and some alcohol. I upgraded the barrel to this uh, Lone Wolf barrel. Let me tell you, huge difference. Huge difference. Plus, it looks cool. Um, I upgraded the slide stop. I think that's what it's called, right? Let me just double check here on my uh, yep, slide lock. Upgraded the slide lock to make it a little wider so I can have easier uh, breakdown uh, hands on there. And then um, the slide stop, I got that extended uh, portion there. And I got all this from the Glock store. Um, I paid for it, so they're not uh, sponsoring me or anything like that. Um, and also, if you're going to take apart your Glocks and your slides, do yourself a favor and buy these slide cover plates they're cheap they're like three bucks um but just even doing this video i lost one so good thing i had a spare one in my kit here um i don't know where it went i'll find it somewhere when i'm cleaning up anyway um i did my own sights so barrel slide stop and the lock um this is a gen 4 so it already came with an extended magazine release um so it's just i did these things uh all by myself so anyway all right so let's break this thing down let's first of all and also before you break these things down even though you know you checked it check it again right? I always double check and make sure there's nothing in that pipe before I uh, pull this trigger because you don't want this thing to go bang when you're, when you're cleaning all right so you guys have seen this done a million times I'm not gonna tell you how you do it let's just get this done we don't need the slide we don't need the magazine we don't need the barrel we don't need this. Here's the nitty gritty. Okay, so this is your plain Glock barrel, um, and you need a 332 punch or a Glock punch. I prefer. I really don't like that. Um, it's plastic and it bends, and uh, I don't like any give in my um, tools here when I'm dealing with this. So <clears throat> there's a little doohickey right here. And like I said, I'm not a gunsmith, so pardon me if I don't know all the names. You're going to put a little bit of pressure on here, just like that. And what's going to happen is it's going to release the, pre the pressure from the striker, and that little cap is going to just boop, fall right up. All right? And from there, now, this part, your firing pin assembly, is going to come right out. And then this little part, let me refer to my... Um, that is called the extractor depressor plunger. That's going to come out right there also. Boom. 
So that's what it should look like. Okay, uh, how good of a camera do I have here? Um, I cleaned these. I just finished cleaning it, so um, I, I did not shoot it, uh, taking this apart. This Gen 4 um, Glock 19 is relatively new. I only have about maybe 400 rounds through it in uh, three shooting sessions. So I'm going to put this aside here. Here's that. It looks clean. And here is your firing pin and assembly. And that's what it should look like clean. Okay. And some light in here. Hope I'm doing better with this lighting, but uh, whatever. Um, I gotta figure out how to turn this light on from this camera. So that's what it should look like. Let's set this aside. And this, so I don't lose it, because I already lost a back cover today. All right, here's my Glock 26. Set that out. You are clear. I check it again. I stick my pinky in there, and this I'm just I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me. Okay, I don't want this thing to go bang. But before I pull that trigger, I always do that. Boom. There's that. Spring. Barrel. Put this aside. We don't need that. Okay, so same thing. Let's take this out of here. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is um, I forgot to show you how to take the extractor out, and that's pretty easy. Um, you are going to depress on the firing pin safety and firing pin safety spring, and that's right there. If you press that right there, boom. That's just going to pop right out, just like that. Did it pop out on camera? I hope it did. Um, and then you've got your, whoops, extractor, okay? And you've got your, where'd it go? Firing pin safety. So we're going to put those over here. And this is what they should look like. Clean. Okay? That's what they should look like. And there is your extractor, which I just cleaned. And it should look like that. Move this camera a little bit. That's what it should look like. Okay? So I'm going to set this aside. My Glock is broken down. I don't think I want to take that apart any more than I have. The, uh, the frame, that's a different story. We'll do that some other day. So what I do is I clean all those parts, and then I take a swab with alcohol. I like alcohol as opposed to the uh, Hoppies or Hops 9, just because it dries everything out. Um, and if I can't get any carbon or residue, then I'll go in with the Hoppies. Um, so that's clean. That's what uh, it should look like. Okay, um, so we're going to set this aside. Now, let's go into this one. Keep in mind, I've owned this Glock 26 for, like I said, about 11 years. I've never taken apart this slide. Uh, this is the same one where I showed you guys how to install your own sights. These were the True Glow sights, so it's the same exact one. So we're gonna depress this plunger here. Of course, it's not going to let me do it. Cap comes off. Boom. And let's see what we have here. Holy mother. That is dirty. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is just filthy McNasty. Yowza. Holy diablo. Um, and that's that. That's not that bad. Um, but yeah, it's still it's still crusted on. I I mean, this thing is horrendous. Uh, just I don't know if you can keep this on camera, but this is just glopped on here. And the thing is, I shoot as cheap ammo with this Glock 26 as possible. Um, uh, even cheaper this Finocchi. I don't even know what the name of it is. You know what? Let me see if I got some here. 
Uh, of course, I don't have a box. But anyway, um, stuff made in Mexico. It's like nine dollars a box for 124 grain, 50 rounds, and it is dirty. I mean, it's absolutely the dirtiest stuff available. Um, so let's get this clean. This is alcohol, just regular rubbing alcohol. Take it on a brush here. Toothbrushes work great. And I'm just going to clean it just like this. And I like the alcohol just because it just dries everything out. Um, and it's cheap. It's like a dollar a container. Alcohol is cheap. Time's expensive. So I am very generous with this stuff. Okay. Patch. That looks much better. I move this spring. Try to move this spring back and forth like that because it might loosen up some stuff that might have been caught in there and then go around with your spring here. But uh, this firing pin looks good. Um, I also like to take a Q tip. Right here. And stick it in here. Examine your firing pin, it looks good. Okay. Now, it's time to lubricate this bad boy. Uh, actually, let's clean this one too. Cool thing about Glocks is that you can break them down like this easy. The hardest part is not losing the parts because I've done that. Okay, so this is clean to my satisfaction. Um, my lubricant of the day. Ah, what to get, what to get. Let's use, I'm just gonna use plain old hobbies today. Lubricating oil. So I'm going to put this on here like this. Stay away from the firing pin. I'm gonna, yep, yep, I did that. Let's get all the oil on there. And I should be wearing gloves here, but I'm not. Okay, that is clean. This is my slide. I'm gonna get another Q-tip. With some alcohol. Now I'm gonna go down in this channel here. And this is absolutely filthy. That's 11 years of nastiness. Look at that. Yeah. That's nasty. This is what motivates me to clean my weapons every now and then because that's not good. You don't want you want this thing to go bang every time, and this is this is the, that Glock 26 is my carrying Glock, so shame on me for not cleaning this sucker out. And I'm gonna keep cleaning this until this Q-tip comes out relatively clean. This is still coming out dirty. And you know what? Most people, other than. Uh, Hickok 45 haven't owned their Glocks for more than 12 years um, and if you shoot cheap ammo you should clean it more often if you shoot clean stuff you should still clean it but I'm gonna get into this slide here while I'm here and this is still coming out nasty I have this brush here like this this gets into nice crannies
nicely there. Oh, and someone asked me um, what I use to clean my night sights. That's a really good question. Um, some manufacturers say soap and water, which is a good idea. I use rubbing alcohol. Um, and I have not had any problems. So I will leave that up to you guys. All right. I did not take this extractor out, so this is how I showed you before how to take it out. Just depress that plunger there. That sucker should just fall right out. Pardon my big fingers. But there you go. There's your extractor. And this thing is filthy. Can I get that? That is nasty. Lit. And this plunger. Holy. That's dirty. Focus. Focus. Alright, we gotta clean that up. And um, this is where I buy all my stuff. I got this stuff from a Glock store. They are very fast shippers and they got tons of stuff. And, uh, trust me, you can spend 300 bucks accessorizing your Glock for these guys. Easy. Alright, so I'm going to go in this area where the extractor was and clean around here look at that that's 11 years of crap Oof. so if you think your Glock is clean by just breaking it down and doing the basic breakdown like you do that's what your Glock looks like inside All right, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm sticking it in that little plunger hole to get all that stuff out of there and then I'm going in here um, another tip don't go cheap on your q-tips all right don't go to the dollar store for your q-tips get decent q-tips look at that look at that um, because I've noticed that the cheap q-tips fray a lot when you um, are in there cleaning them so no they're not made by the same people the actual q-tips work a lot better and that's that's still nasty, so I'm going to keep going. Boy, hey. And this is just alcohol. Um, another reason I use alcohol is because I've got kids in the house, and that hoppy stuff just stinks. And the missus always complains about me stinking up the house. Right now I'm in a basement with a window. Uh, open and a ventilator um, and I got the fan on too so that's coming out a little bit cleaner but it's still I'm gonna do one more and I'm done and one thing I recommend also even though you have good vision get a pair of these I have these for like 20 bucks on Sportsman's Guide, and I can actually see what I'm doing with this. You can really get in there and just, it gives you superhero vision. I don't want to show my mug here. Why? Eh. I just don't want to. Dashful. Okay, I am satisfied with that. With that um, I'm not going to lubricate anything in there because you don't want to gunk up your firing pin um, I've already lubricated the firing pin and I've already lubricated that um, let's clean up this uh, I keep forgetting the name of this thing firing pin safety and firing pin safety spring that's what this is so again this is just alcohol and a brush not telling you hoppies is not good I just don't like the smell of it 
I do have some. Okay. And by the way, they make these in titanium. I don't know if uh, there's any advantage to that, but it says it makes your, your shots come up quicker. I don't know if that's true or not, but maybe someday if I'm bored, I'll do it. So I'm cleaning my extractor now. I want to see what this looks like. Look at that. That's 12 years of... 11 years of just shooting and shooting and shooting. And I'm going to guess on my Glock 26. I'm going to guess I got like maybe 3,000 rounds to it. Not a lot. But keep in mind, I own a lot of guns, so I don't get to shoot them all when I want to. More alcohol. Okay. Yeah, the dirt just keeps coming off the stuff. All right, this is kind of caked on. So I'm gonna use one of these. These are plastic dental um, cleaners. I got this, these cheap, I don't know where. If I knew, I would tell you, but they allow you to uh, get into crevices that you normally cannot, and that's, and it's plastic, so it won't mess up that coating that's on there. And don't do that, because it puts humidity on there, but I still do it. I don't know why. All right, more alcohol. And I'm good. Okay. Awesome. And then, I'm going to put a dab on this lubricant. Put it down. I'm going to put just enough lube to get it slippery on there on my extractor. And that's it. Okay. I'm going to put this back in there. Um, let me know what you guys do. Do you guys oil that in there? I don't know. Is that a good idea? You know what? Let's just do one little dab of ballast oil. There. That's all I'm going to do. Just for the smell of it. So that can go back and forth nice and easy on there. And then this. Remember to put it back the same way. You got to put it with the black part outward. So it's going to go in there like that. Then you've got your um, firing pin safety. Hello. That to go in. Why doesn't it want to go in? I got to take this out first. That's why. Okay. Like I said, I'm not a gunsmith. And your extractor. Son of a. Take it. Fell out. Alright. There. Extractor. Alright. Here. You gotta press on it. Put it in. And it's in there. Just like that. Okay, firing pin assembly is going in. Boom. That's going in. Then you gotta take your 330 seconds punch. You're gonna press it in and then slide your rear cap on. And this is dirty too, so let me clean this thing. And this does not need to be lubricated. These also come in aluminum. They're plastic, but you can get them different colors, Punisher stuff. I'm not into that, so whatever. All right, so I'm gonna press this there and put that cap back on. You can't do it with, you can't put your thumb on that and press because it's gonna be way too hard. Um, so I'm gonna do this so you guys can see 
Uh, you're gonna exam have to wait while I get this thing out. Okay, that's in there. I'm pressing down on my 3 series 30 second punch. Putting my cap on. And now that I've depressed the firing pin assembly, now this little sucker's gotta be pressed in while you push the slide in. Come on, sucker. See, I told you I'm not a good breath. And it should click right in there. Okay. Lube. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one there, and one there. Glocks do not need a lot of, of lube. Um, and when it comes to lube, the more the better does not apply. Why is this camera bouncing all over the place? What the hell? This back here. Check. Remember, I have a safety on mine. See? Does not go. Now, safety down. Okay, that works. That works. That works. That works. That works. My, let's see. My laser work. Yep. My laser works. It's laser max. And that's it. I'm good to go. Um, there's really nothing else to cover. I'm just saying, um, you guys, uh, don't be afraid of your Glocks. Clean them up. Get to know them. It's, uh, it's great to be able to work on your own firearms. And uh, like I said, I've done a lot to this firearm all by myself. Um, the only thing I did not install was the safety because that was done by a gunsmith because I am not a gunsmith. Um, this is a Gen 3. It shoots phenomenal, um, and I love it. And let me give you another tip. Don't sell your guns. The only reason you, I sell my guns is if, if something doesn't work perfectly, or I get too many failures to feed and I cannot fix the problem, I get rid of it. And the person that I sell it to, I let them know, and usually they're either a gunsmith or a gun store. Um, but do the right thing. If a gun isn't working right, don't sell it to your average Joe Smo and tell him you love it because most likely they're going to shoot it just for fun but if that person has to depend on their firearm then you just sold them a paperweight um, so do the right thing um, and I've only sold maybe two out of all my weapons in my entire life um, and they were they were cheap and just didn't work anyway so anyway Glocks don't ever sell them keep them um, that's it peace out